Everybody, welcome back to CF's Heroes of Sport. My name is Bob Babbitt, co-founder of the Challenge Athletes Foundation. Every week I get to chat with one of our amazing challenge athletes from around the world. This week is no different. She has been the two Paralympic Games. She has two silver medals and a gold medal. Her name is Grace Norman. Grace, how are you doing? I'm doing so well. Thank you for having me, Bob. Always a pleasure. So take me back growing up. Uh, what age was your leg amputated? Uh, so I was amputated at birth, actually. Um, I was born with a congenital condition called amniotic band syndrome. Um, and I was a surprise to my parents. They didn't know that I was going to be an amputee. Um, so we just kind of dealt with that when I was born. But yeah, it's always been me. And I'm 24 years old now. So always been me. Yeah, that basically your reality. It wasn't one of those things where you had a trauma later on. It was like, hey, this is the way I was born and this is, uh, this is the way I live. Was sport always part of your life? Yes. Um, I was born into an extremely athletic family. Um, I'm a middle child, so that makes me already competitive. Um, but my parents were both athletes growing up and um, they really encouraged us to get into sport young. So I started off in um, t-ball and softball and soccer and basketball um, until I finally landed on running and swimming in high school and then I found triathlon in high school as well. So you were in high school you're the first female amputee to finish on a podium at your high school track and field state championship that had to be pretty cool. It was it was um it was definitely really neat I, I have an older sister who's a very accomplished runner as well and so she had always made it to state and medaled and um, to be able to compete and medal at a state track meet in high school was just a dream of mine. And it was, it was amazing. 2014, your first was your first elite ITU para triathlon. So how you were young when you got yeah. into the triathlon. Yeah, I think I was about, um, I must've been like 16. I think that's the year, the age you have to be in order to compete at an ITU level. Um, so yeah, 2014 and two short years was led me into Rio in 2016. So you're like 18 years old going to your first Paralympic games and you're not just doing paratriathlon, but you're also doing track and field. You're running the 400. Correct. Yeah. That in Rio, I chose to double sport. Um, and that was definitely a challenge, but my heart was always with track and field first. Um, and then I, you know met triathlon which has since then kind of taken my heart a little bit more but it was really neat to be able to represent usa in both sports and medal in both sports so that was really neat well and also what you set uh you won gold in the triathlon you get silver uh, in the 400 meters there's not many athletes who win multiple medals in two different sports in the same paralympics that's pretty cool yeah it was definitely I was very surprised. I was not expecting to have a good race in the 400 meter just because of the timeline. Um, the, the triathlon was on a Sunday and the 400 meter was the very next day. Um, so it was a little bit squished in, but I'm so, so happy I got to, you know, represent in two different sports. Well, and the cool part was that was the first year that we had para triathlon in the Olympics. We went in 2000, 2016. So you're there when the first ever Paralympic para triathlon is being held and you get a gold medal. Yes. <laughs> it's like the coolest thing ever. So how did all that change, change your life? When you come back from your first Paralympics, you get a gold, you get a silver, but then it's like, okay, back to what am I going to do now? Going to college, becoming a nurse. Talk a little about what the transition was for you. Yeah, it was, um, I was 18 years old when I won both medals and I actually, it was a bronze in the 400. Oh, the bronze in the 400. Right, right, right. Yeah, which, sadly, <laughs> I would have loved the silver, um, but I guess I like, made up for that in Tokyo. Now I have a yes, full you set. Did. Um, but it was, it was interesting because I was 18 years old. I just graduated high school. I was set to compete in college for cross country and track and start my nursing um, degree. And so I basically, I missed the first month of school because of the Paralympics and then came back and I went to a, a decently, a smaller division two school um, called Cedarville University. Cedarville, yeah. Yeah. In and, Ohio. Yes, in Ohio, where I, I was, uh, I lived the majority of my um, undergrad and childhood and everything. Um, but everyone seemed to know me and I didn't really know anyone because they had, <laughs> you know, broadcasted everywhere like, oh, we have a student who's in the Paralympics. Um, 
And so there was, there was a lot of interviews that needed to be happening. And um, I was like, I'm just trying to be a normal college student. I'm, you know, behind in my anatomy class and in all these different classes. Like I need to, you know, figure out how to deal with my life now instead of be in the Paralympics and have all that kind of notoriety. Um, but winning gold really did set me up for the next five years of my career. Um, I was able to finish college in a four year span um, with a nursing degree and compete um, under Coach Bolander in uh, track and field and cross country for Cedarville University. And it was a really good time in my life. I loved, it really helped develop me into the athlete and the person I am today and set me up for a really good um, backup career path as a nurse. Well, and also 2019 USA Triathlon Collegiate Club National Championships. That's pretty fun. Yeah, I I was able to um, help kind of start the triathlon club at, at Cedar Hill University with my dad, who's there, the faculty advisor. Um, and so I was able to compete there. I think I placed 24th or 26th. 26th out of 450. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, um, but what was neat was this past year, post-Tokyo, um, the collegiate club, allowed 2020 grads to come back and compete um because it was taken from us because of covid and so what? i was able to place third um this past this past fall that's fun now was that in malibu yes it was in malibu oh uh, that's where i saw you i saw you at malibu yeah. was, now i i saw this something of you you train pigs <laughs> i it, that's an old um yes i did i i grew up on a farm um in jamestown ohio and we had cows and pigs and chickens and goats and we would train them and show them at the county fair every year um so yes there there are a lot of rumors going around that i was uh, a pig whisperer and a pig trainer but those days are behind me for now at least <laughs> So what I, what I really love is in 2016, you get the gold and Lauren Stedman from uh, the UK gets the silver. And then in 2020, she flips, flips the switch a little bit and she gets, she goes 104.46, you go 105.27 and she gets, gold. what's the relationship like with you and Lauren? Because obviously this is like five years that you guys have been competing against each other. Yeah, so um, we've been competing against each other for the past eight years. Eight um, years. Yeah, it's been, it's insane. Um, and it's funny because like when I first joined the circuit, I was 16 years old and I believe she is um, five or six years older than me. Okay. And so she was, you know, in college. Um, and by the time we were in Rio, she was finishing up her, uh, I don't remember, it was, it was some big, paper um either end of graduate school i believe and so um she's a few steps ahead in life just in by her age and her maturity um and in racing and in her career she's been to a few more paralympics than me and so at first when i first met her saw her i was terrified of her i was like she was the person to beat and i like just wanted to beat her at all costs like i was right. like i don't want to be friends i just want to beat you like and even in, in Rio, I like only been racing her for a year and a half, two years. We didn't really have a good connection. We were very, it was just like a good job, good luck, that's it. Um, but over the past, I guess, five years since Rio, um, we've really become good friends and good training partners. She was able to come out in um, January this, this year and train um, in Claremont with me for a few weeks, which was really neat. Um, but we do have that interesting dynamic of we've both gone silver and gold in um a paralympic games against each other and i think it helps um we definitely respect each other respect each other in how we race and how, who we are as um people and she's definitely been uh, a very good mentor to me which i think is really neat um someone who has either been beaten or beat someone and then to reach out and be able to encourage and mentor is really really impressive um so i no no hard words against her she's a wonderful competitor wonderful woman and a great friend well and the deal is you sort of need each other right because you need yes. someone to push you to keep the uh, the rest of the people away right you, yeah you, you... It's, it's been really cool seeing the um 
just how much para sport has grown in general, but um, how para triathlon has become so much more competitive and how yeah. the, the bar just keeps raising. And so it's good to have someone neck and neck. And if you have a bad day, one or, you know, between one and four, anyone can really take the win that day. And so that's been really cool to see the progression in just the sport. So you won Sarasota this last weekend or a couple weekends ago, right? That was a, sort is. of the kickoff of the season. What is the, what are the goals for this year? Um, there's a lot going on this year. Um, it's an off year. It's not a Paralympic year, which is a little less um, stressful or intense, but um, hopefully I'll be racing a lot just to kind of get more experience, um, kind of test the waters, get to know my competitors a bit more. I have been racing for eight years, but I still feel like I'm a little bit of a baby when it comes to um, just certain areas in a triathlon, there's always room for improvement in something. Um, but another big goal this year, well, not goal, but I'm getting married. Um, so oh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's in August. So planning the wedding, trying to figure out everything with, um, where we're going to live and getting all the venue meetings and everything. Um, but yeah, worlds isn't until November this year. So it's a long season. Um, but I'm excited to just do a lot of racing and have some fun and visit a lot of different countries that I wasn't able to in the previous years just because of uh, training restrictions or health concerns. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. Well, and with, you know, from a uh, racing perspective, the bummer, you know, losing a year to COVID. So the, the Paralympics didn't happen in 2021, but the positive is Paris is only three years away. Right. So it's, it's not like you're going, Oh, do I want to, I'm, I'm guessing that, that Paris is the next goal. Yeah, correct. Um, Paris is definitely the next goal. It's nice to have this year is a little bit more of a down year and you know, the two years before it picks up with the test event and everything. Um, but yeah, Paris is the goal and definitely have, uh, LA in mind. Um, and we'll see about maybe, uh, a potential fifth, but right now Paris is the goal. <laughs> Paris is the goal. Do you see yourself like we just had Chris Hammer, uh, who's missing a hand, just became the first challenge athlete to become a professional and to get his elite card. And you're sort of in that category where if you were if you were racing, if you decided to jump into a seventy point three or something like that, uh, you would be incredibly competitive. Is does that appeal to you down the line? You know, I think um, maybe when I retire from short course um yeah. i i have a background in uh like shorter distances as far as running and so like that's kind of where my heart is right now um but it does intrigue me and maybe post la or the next games after that um we'll reevaluate kind of see where i'm at in life and um i definitely don't want to you know give up triathlon completely when i'm retire from Paralympic. Um, so it could be fun to kind of dabble in long course. Okay. And is, is CAF been part of your journey? Yes, they have. I've, I've been a CAF, uh, ambassador athlete. i um, definitely been, uh, they've been a huge support of me throughout. I, ever since I even heard of, um, adaptive sports. Um, uh, I think I, I got my first grant from them was my second year of racing. Um, Pretty cool. And yeah, it's, it's amazing to, to see newer athletes coming along and the top athletes alike, both um, being uh, supported by CAF and all the hard work you guys do for the adaptive community. It just, it really means so much for us. So how have you changed as an athlete from here? You were a runner moving into paratriathlon. Now the focus is, is paratriathlon. How have you, how have you become, obviously you have to get better. You got Lauren out there every day. Every day you get up to train, you're like, I know Lauren's already got her workout in. <laughs> yeah. How have you changed? Oh boy, that's a loaded question. I have changed so much. Um, just looking back on my younger self, which I'm still very young, but just, you are. <laughs> just like I guess it would be, you know, eight or ten years ago. Um, I used to let I I still let pressure and nerves get to me, but back a when I was first starting with just running, um, I would let nerves and fear consume me and I wouldn't see the joy in what I was doing. And now that I've gone through high school, gone through college and triathlon has become more of my career. It is my career. You, you come to a crossroads where you have to enjoy what you do or else you're not, it's not going to be sustainable. And so I really 
found so much joy in what I'm doing instead of making it a, a crippling fear experience. It's okay. I've been given this talent and blessed with, with this in my life and so many different supporters. So let's just see how fast I can go on the day. And that might mean that it's going to be really painful to push through and, and break down barriers and what your mind thinks you can do. But I've definitely taken on that more of this is an opportunity to see how fast I can go instead of like letting it define me as who I am as a person and an athlete. Um, but it definitely does help having that bar keep raising with other competitors from around the world. Um, there's definitely a, a bit of a motivation. So you, you always want to stay up with what's going on with other people, how you're um, going to stack up with them. Um, I'm an extremely competitive person. That has not changed throughout the years of my racing career. I'm still extremely competitive and the goal is to win. Um, but I've definitely learned to enjoy the process more. I'm guessing when you came, you, after winning the gold in 16, getting the silver in 2020, which is still awesome, you're still on the podium. Yeah. But, you know, when you came across that finish line, was it, disappointment was it okay i've got four years to go i got three years to go get my gold back what was going through your head yeah there was a lot kind of um that happened in the in the lead up to tokyo um i i made a coaching change uh, i took a step back and looked at what i needed to work on and that was cycling um the women in my category are just extremely strong um and i the three years leading into tokyo was getting just demolished by them by like three minutes in a 20 K. Um, and it was just like, there was no coming back. Like no matter how fast I ran, I couldn't catch it. And so I took a step back and was like, in order to even be close to winning gold, I need to take some serious time and put it into, you know, a cycling block, a cycling coach. And so, um, I made a coaching change and now with Greg Mueller, and uh, he took my cycling to an extremely different level that I was not aware that even existed. Um, and it really did help um, come close to the women that I was racing against. And in Tokyo, there was a lot of things that happened with COVID. Um, I was contact traced, so I had to be quarantined. And it was just kind of crazy with everything that happened. So on the day, I gave my very best, um, set myself up for the best possible way to succeed. And um, silver was what I had that day. And obviously gold was the goal. I was extremely proud of Lauren for taking it. Um, but there's definitely a fire in me to, in three years. I will definitely be going for gold again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Grace, for taking time. I, I always enjoy chatting with you because again, your smile lights up the room and you're you are an incredibly competitive person who, who doesn't want to be looking up at anybody if you're going to be standing on the podium. You don't really, you no, want not. your flag and your anthem, not, not somebody else's. Exactly, exactly. Grace, thank you so much for joining us on CAF's Heroes of Sport. Thank you so much, Bob. Again, Grace Norman has been our guest. We are on every week. Check us out, CAF's Heroes of Sport. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.